Okay, so next up is Rebecca Cooney from the College of Com, and Rebecca's going to talk about a couple of different ways that she's creating digital course content for both her online and her Pullman campus course. So she's using these tools in both settings. I am. Rebecca. So did everyone get handouts? Okay, good. Because I don't really have a PowerPoint because this is such an interactive thing. Okay, here we go. So I'm brand new to VoiceThread and Screencast-O-Matic, thanks to Theron, who's over there. Wonderful instructional designer. So I've been teaching 562, which is a digital media course, um, Masters in Strategic Com. And I'm also teaching 381 and 310, which are digital media courses and writing for multiple medium courses. And I have managed to incorporate both VoiceThread and Screencast-O-Matic in everything. And I really, really love it, and the students love it. Um, I went to a conference, um, so I was gone for a day, just one, one class period, one, or one class day. Uh, but I didn't want to lose my, my rhythm in the syllabus, so I just had them view my lecture and gave instructions all through VoiceThread and Screencast-O-Matic in my absence. And it worked beautifully. Um, and so I'm, I'm a huge fan. So I, I've given you guys a couple of handouts. Um, did you give them both? Where are the people? Yes? OK. I just want to be clear on what you guys have. So <clears throat> we can go over some of the highlights. The, the um, handout that I have on the screen right now is really your, I call them the five W's. I think uh, Brett probably uses that as well. The who, what, where, when, why, the old inverted pyramid of uh, early PR days. Um, <clears throat> so the, those five W's of what, what is VoiceThread, why would you even use it? Um, VoiceThread is actually available to you now. It's a WSU, um, it's not based in WSU, but it partners with WSU in our learning management system. And so I use it primarily for storage. Um, I store my um, already uh, audio, voiceovered, or videoed uh, lectures, instructions, introductions, demonstrations, tutorials, you name it. And I bring it all up into VoiceThread and then that VoiceThread houses it, and what's nice about that is that my friend Theron over there has full access to my content, and then he, um, as my instructional designer, goes in and places that content into the global campus environment there inside of my online course, um, and it's all very quick, and it's lovely, and it works really, really well. Um, I use it, um, I use MP4 files for video. Uh, I use PowerPoint. I also use Prezi. I use... PDFs, you can do all sorts of things. Um, I use it in online courses and I have used it several times for my, my classroom courses, especially tutorials and demonstrations. I tend to talk really fast. Students can't keep up, they need to refresh, especially when I'm training. I train a lot on online tools. I train in web, I train in um, email, online advertising, social media setup, LinkedIn setup, all these things, and um, it's a lot of information. Overload, 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 overload. So what I do is I create a demonstration or a tutorial using my voice and walking through. Um, and then that way the students can go back, they can refresh, they can do it at their leisure over lunch. Um, and a lot of them really use the, that feature as well. Um, and why do I use it? Well, I don't know if there's others out there. I don't know if there are others. I use it because Theron told me to. I don't know. Okay, Screencast-O-Matic. I love Screencast-O-Matic. That's another one that Theron introduced me to. It's not the only screen uh, capture software, Brett. What are the other ones you've mentioned? Screener. Screener? Yeah, he'll show that one. You'll show, okay, he'll show that one. I don't know Screener. I know Screencast-O-Matic. And there's, it's actually free. It's a web-based um, or open source tool, as we call it. And you can set up your own little account. You can download the software, or you can run it off of... Um, any, you know, internet connection. For $15, you can get some of the added features like increased bandwidth, and that's $15 for the year. I think that's pretty reasonable. I would suggest that. I'll, I'll show you my, my, um, my infrastructure in a minute. So Screencast-O-Matic I use uh, for all of my screen capture. I walk through le lectures because I'm always going back and forth, and I don't know the, who's Prezi. Anyone use Prezi? My, my, my hatred and love of Prezi. Prezi does not allow you to go out into the world of interweb, internet, web to web. Um, we call it interweb at my house, sorry. <laughs> that's a joke, but um, except for YouTube, that's your limitation in Prezi. So that's a, that's a major problem. 
Um, also, I find that VoiceThread, you cannot go out into um, the internet when you're doing a, a, if you're trying to do a live uh, voiceover. You can't easily go out to the internet and let, let your viewers see what's going on. So screen capture is the way to kind of get around all of that. And so I set it up, and I'll demonstrate for you in a minute, um, the Screencast-O-Matic system to tape basically everything that I'm doing. And so it's filming uh, my face if I want it to, which I usually don't because I blink. I think it's distracting. Um, I, my voice and my movements on screen. So, and I can pause. So I go through lecture and I can pause and I go out to a website and do my thing out there, pause. I can go over to a document, walk them through a, something over here, pause. Now they're not seeing the pauses, but it, it, so it creates a seamless, really steady flow presentation um, for, for the users. And it works really, really well, really good feedback on it. Uh, and then what I do is at the end, after I've, I've done my, my um, taping, I save it as an MP4, and then I upload that MP4 right into VoiceThread, and I throw that embed code over to my friend Theron, who makes it lovely in Angel. And it all happens really fast. And I, I usually provide supplements. I usually provide PDFs and other things um, for those that um, don't have time to look at the video. But I've had, so we're, what are we in now, week 11, 12, right, of the semester? I've had zero complaints from my master's students. They are thrilled. They really like the system. They're, um, because I, when I do instructions for assignments, I do voiceover instruction as an accompaniment to my instruction sheet. I walk them through templates. I walk them through samples. I walk them through tutorials. If they have any questions, it's usually like, how do I turn it in? You know, they, otherwise, they, they really don't have any questions. It, it seems to be covered. Um, I can use it anywhere as long as I have um, a computer. You don't even need an internet connection, actually, unless you're going out to the internet. So um, I use Screencast-O-Matic everywhere, at coffee shops, at home, in the office, wherever. doesn't matter, because you, you can do whatever you want. Um, you, you don't need a webcam unless you're going to do your um, video. Uh, but you do need some kind of mic system. I also use my handy $14 earbuds. I recommend these over. Um, I know uh, some folks use the mic system, the external mic. Um, and now, is there, aren't you dealing with somebody who's having a lot of buzzing right now? So I don't have any buzzing. So I use this, and it works just fine. I also, um, what Theron and I have found out is that the, the audio quality seems to be superior on Screencast-O-Matic over straight uh, voice thread. So we're, we're using that. So let me. Um, let me show you a couple of things here. So let's just look at the VoiceThread interface. So um, VoiceThread, in your handout has the URL. It's just wsu.voicethread.com, uh, or do I have that backwards? Oh, I do? I feel like I have it backwards. Um, and you just log in with your standard credential, and you can set up your VoiceThread. So when I first got into this last at Christmas, so it hasn't been very long, um, I had nothing in here. This is my. This is what's called my voice. So what, the other handout. So I was on. Um, I was on the summary. My 5W handout. So the other handout actually walks you through all of the features with screenshots. I'm a big screenshot person. Um, so you'll see uh, how you log in once you get in. What we're looking at is what I call my dashboard, my voice um, dashboard. And so these are. I have 12 pages in this dashboard. You can see I've been using. Um, voice for a lot over the last few months. Uh, and you create using this little tab. And this is where you upload your, um, can you, you can upload straight PowerPoints. I haven't done that. I usually do it in PDF. Um, PowerPoints, PDFs, um, Word docs, anything that you want. And so you just, it's a pretty straightforward, or the MP4s. So I go to my computer and I can grab um, here, we'll just grab our little final awareness campaign checklist. So if you want to go straight into VoiceThread, which seems, um, you know, which may be your preference, if you're not going out to the web, um, I think that it, it does skip a step. Because otherwise, with Screencast-O-Matic, you have to save it, and then you have to upload it. But if you do it straight into VoiceThread, then you're not going to have to um, you know, go through, through that business. So it, it comes in. I'm, I, as I always teach my students, the first thing you need to do is save it, because they don't like to save things, ever. So they always lose stuff. So I add a title. So if I call this my final awareness campaign, oops, I number everything. 
381, final awareness campaign checklist. Um, I can just say Word doc checklist of um, final campaign to do's. And if you really want to have some fun, you can actually do tags. If you want to search, um, if, if, your, if your voice thread starts to get very big, you might want to do tags to help yourself out. I, have, I name everything lesson one, lesson 1A, lesson 1B, lesson. So I, I have a pretty um, strict uh, naming convention because otherwise everything would be named digital and I'd have a problem. So I, I, have, to, I have to use that. And that's, uh, that's the excitement of the naming. Now, if I want to go in and I want to do any editing, I can just go to comment. And this is where, if I had a, web, a webcam, it would come up. And I'm sorry, I didn't bring my webcam. Um, is it taping me? Can we tell? Oh. What did it do? Why aren't we taping me? Oh, here we go. Sorry, Baron. Now it's mad at me. OK, so in the record, um, you can, if I had, uh, it's going to try to get to my mic. I do not have an internal um, recorder here. But uh, you can walk through. So if I'm telling my students, um, this is the public awareness campaign checklist. Uh, and everything is due on May 9th by midnight. Uh, you can go in any order that you choose. However, I do suggest that you start with your research and then you move down the list and so on and so forth. I can go in here and make a point. I can grab my little red and I can say, now this one is very important right here. I can do a little John Madden and I can X things out <laughs> and I can s and just say, forget this one. Uh, and then I can stop recording. Now, if I had a video, it would also uh, offer me that option. Here it is. <laughs> okay, we can stop her. Um, <laughs> so you can save it. You can um, re redo it. Pretty pretty straightforward. If if I brought in, um, well, let me let me keep going with this one. So if I'm if I'm happy with it, um, I would then go into publishing options. Now this is other. Um, trial and error that, that we've learned. You want to do allow to view if you are working, um, if you do plan on sharing this with anyone, um, just yourself. You want to make sure that everybody can view it. Um, allow anyone to comment. That, that would be um, your, your choice. Uh, normally, I would open, I, I check that box just because you want to, if you're, it's a really great way to create some interactive uh, dialogue with students, with each other. Or if they, want to, if they want to do an audio question instead of a typed question to you, it's really nice. Uh, moderating comments, um, you don't have to check that. What, we, what uh, Theron and I discovered once was that I, I, I had done shown on all browse pages, so I was getting comments from people who aren't even in my class, who don't know me, and I found that I don't like that, and it's distracting. So I, um, I, checked, I, I don't check this box. Theron, can you say why anyone would want to do that? <laughs> you just want to spread the word, okay? Um, and moderating comments uh, just means if you if you have a fiery student who is often disruptive, you might want to moderate comments because then you can say this is not helpful. <laughs> so I'm going to just leave you off. Um, or if or if you don't have the problem, you can you know you can leave it. And then the other thing that. Um, I do, if you're, if, I'm, if you're in global campus, is I always share with my friend Theron so he can access, um, access my work, get in there, and um, grab content or whatever. I don't know what you do with it, but then he gets access. Um, I also grab my embed code. Now, for, if I'm doing my, uh, just my classroom classes and I'm using VoiceThread, I go into Angel and I create a new page. And I just pop in my little HTML code, right? I just grab this embed code, and I just pop that right into a page, and then it comes up like a nice movie screen. So it works really well inside Angel. So that way, at least it's kind of just, just your class if you don't want it to go outside of that. I suppose you could go to YouTube, right? Oh, just voice, right? OK, OK. Um, and then the other option, um, and I usually give students both. I give them the link 
and I also have it in Angel so that they, because if they get the link, they just have to log into with their credential, and that's, that's it. Uh, and that's basically it, I think. And playback options, I leave all these default, but there are some different options you can, um, if you want people to make a copy, export, if you want to make some different choices. And that's, that's it for, um, for when you bring stuff in. So let me, let me pop over to Screencast-O-Matic. Can we see Screencast-O-Matic? Where is it? There it is. So let's, um, let's bring up something different. Let's pretend that I'm going to walk you guys through a PowerPoint. Let's bring up good old Murrow Gear. Oh, this is an internet marketing campaign. OK, so if I was going to do Screencast-O-Matic, um, and you have instructions on, on how to get Screencast-O-Matic, it's just screencast-o-matic.com. You can create your own account. Um, you can download it, or you can use the web-based version. I personally, if you have your own computer and you're not um, using it all over the place, I suggest just getting that downloaded. I also suggest the $15 upgrade just so you don't have ads and you have a good bandwidth for storage and that kind of stuff. So, and I go over 15 minutes on some of mine, which I know is probably not a good idea. Screencast-O-Matic. So this is the, um, the dashboard uh, for Screencast-O-Matic. And so this has all of my um, captured lectures, instructions, um, introductions, everything is in here. Also, if I choose to use Prezi, so I've got a Prezi up here. Let's see here. Oops. I want to go this way. Prezi. So I can also um, do it on a Prezi. Uh, now, Prezi also has the audio capability. I actually have not tested that. I choose Screencast-O-Matic um, just because I'd like to have the control, the pausing, and um, other features. So let's look at, um, if I'm in Screencast-O-Matic, where are you, little friend? There it is. Um, very, the, the, the interface is um, about as bare bones as you can get. This is what you're looking at. You go to record, and it's going to give you this little dotted line box, and you can actually work behind it, so you can, if you have things opened that you don't want. I often will turn off my Outlook, because I can't seem to figure out how to get that ding to shut up. I don't know how to make it stop. I try it so many times, I don't understand. It doesn't like it. You have some options here on your screen size. Um, my daughter, who is 13, was using this uh, just last week. She was interviewing um, a friend of hers who is uh, in Yemen. And um, we were trying to figure things out. So if, if a 13-year-old can figure it out, you know, I think everybody should feel confident. And we have um, full screen. I use full screen most of the time just because I like to, I want everything. So I'm going to just say full screen. And that's going to adjust it get all the way out. We've got, it's got the sound off. OK. It's got, um, I don't have a video attached. If I had a video, it, oh, it's right here, webcam. I don't have a camera detat or attached. Um, and it's recording right there. So if I wanted to do this full screen, or I could go back and say, well, I don't want to do full screen, but I want to adjust it myself, you can actually drag the area. If you choose to film yourself as well, I just think it's kind of odd for them to just look at me talking. So that's why I, I don't feel like I'm very entertaining with my, I, I, I choose to just have the voice. But the little box comes up down in the lower right when, um, when you have it that way. Uh, and then when you're ready to record, you just let the little three, two, one go. And I will start, you know, this is the Murrow um, gear sample internet marketing campaign. I'm going to walk you through what the students did and introductions and blah, blah, blahs. And I advance through my slides. And I should go to slideshow. So if I, but when I get to something, if I want to take them out of this area, I want to show them a video, I usually just do the Alt P, which just gives it a quick pause. Um, I pause it. And then I can say, OK, now I want to get out of this. And now I'm not bugging the students with my movements. They don't see any of this. So I can go out to the internet, and I can say, oh, OK, I'm going to go to my you know, a YouTube or something. And if I wanted to walk them through, I have, an, you know, I have a, a URL that I want to link them to. Then I can start a YouTube. So let's, um, I'm afraid, let's find some. 
I must, uh, uh, something about, yeah, let's do Cookie Monster. That'll be hopefully innocent. That's Sesame Street. Okay, so if I wanted to show them that, I could bring it up full screen. <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> Where'd he go? Um, now, the one thing to note, just and I have this highlighted in your materials, um, if you are going to capture audio that is outside of you, you do not want to be plugged in with your um, your headphones because it won't it won't tape it won't it won't capture that audio, and I learned that the hard way. Um, so you you definitely want. Um, if you're talking and you're trying to capture your voice, the headphone should be in. If you're not, headphones up. So if I wanted to show them this, I'd bring it full screen. Where's my screencast-o-matic? Where'd he go? It's a little bit funky on this. Where'd he go? Did we lose it? Let's see. So um, you just do the record. And it'll capture um, Mr. Cookie Monster, who's my sounds down. And when you're done with that, you can just do the Alt-P to pause it and get, get back to your presentation. <laughs> OK, little friend. And then you go back to your, oh, paused. It's just opening up all sorts of things here. And you can, for, this, for the students, it's seamless because you're just starting right back where you came off. So you said, well, we just viewed video X, and that was very interesting. And now we're going to go on and talk about this uh, metrics and reporting and so forth. And, and the other nice thing about it is once you get this into VoiceThread, they can actually make comments um, on certain slides or on certain aspects of the presentation. When you're done, you click Done. And it brings it into this interface. Um, and this is where you can you could test it to see if it filmed the way you wanted it to. There's a little. You can do some editing in here. Um, I've done a little bit of editing. Um, I find it to be a bit cumbersome in this tool, but there are some editing where you can snip out certain areas. You can zoom in. You can pan in. Um, I don't think we're going to get into that right now. Um, I use always save as a video file. You've got to give it a name. Um, I have a naming convention with my, my lesson six lecture. You know, we'll call it Cookie Monster. And I do a video file, QuickTime. I, I leave all the defaults, save video. Um, and it gives you its progress there at the top. And then once that's done, you go back into VoiceThread, create, and upload it. So we'll, we'll go and cut me off, Rebecca, at any point here if you need to. Or we can start with questions, maybe. Go ahead. The, the main difference is that VoiceThread is, is what you see in front of you. So if you've uploaded your PowerPoint, your document, your what, whatever you've uploaded into it, and you're doing your voice over it, that's, that's it. You can't go out. Um, it's not going to capture anything new. It's just going to capture what's in, already there. So that's the, yeah, and that's the, it's mostly the reason that I don't use VoiceThread most of the time as straight audio, because I'm, I'm almost always going out. 
out of the document. Yeah. Other questions? So we're, uh, well, questions are being asked. Rebecca, do you want to help um, switch to Jan's computer? Oh, yeah. Not really a question, kind of a comment. Um, I'm a librarian, and mm -hmm. when we get somebody who might a ask a question, say, on virtual reference, sometimes it's easier to show than tell. Yep. So what I'll do is I'll make a quick and dirty screencast, and then um, I'll, you know, I'll get their email address, I'll do a screencast, I'll push it to YouTube and send them a link. Yep. So that way it's also a really good way to respond to those kind of questions to create basically a, an archive of responses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I found it to be great. Great. Yeah. It's just a, a wonderful resource. It's really helpful. Yeah. Uh, what other format other than QuickTime is available? Um, do you know? For other formats that are available? For video? For video? Yeah. Uh, so WMV. You can right? upload PowerPoints, PDFs, um, Word documents. What other video files, though? Um, MP4, QuickTime. Uh, Windows Media. W, so Windows WMVs, media, yeah. yeah. FLVs? What's that? Uh, well, FLVs? Um, I don't think Flash, but you could um, do a screencast of internet. You could do a screen, yeah. So I, I've always just done MP4s and it's worked really well. Is that what you use as well? MP4? Yeah. Or WMV, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Rebecca.